and the only believe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, so Hallelujah. great here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Makes you think we don't praise him enough. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach from James again tonight. This, uh, what I use for a text this morning, do not err, my brethren. I didn't hardly even get started in this, and uh, I'm going to. I'm going to, I think I may go over in the second chapter some. Before I get started, I want to remind you what the raw law of the Spirit is tonight. I guess everyone here probably knows what the raw law is that the Bible says, if ye fulfill the raw law, According to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well, it says. Amen. I'm going to start back here in verse 22. And I really feel the Spirit of God strong tonight. Want to get a message across this yes, church here. Um, there's nothing that God can't do. And uh, He wants to do great things here. Yes, He does. We've talked about that Amen. and talked about it and seen what God wants to do. And uh, He will. But he's got to have well and workers to let him do. I mean, yes, I yes. thank the Lord for what is going on in this place. Hallelujah. But we're, we're just at the door. Amen. And he said that he would open up doors that no man could close. And he'd close doors that no man can open. And the God is wanting to open up some doors yes, for each one that's here. God is wanting to do some things. I'm so thankful to see Sonny Amen. and Jerry. Amen. As they were singing, and Sister Wendy, as they were singing, I was thinking about back there in 1983 when I got saved here and started preaching and we started following preachers. The, the Bennett boys was a lot <clears throat> the ones that we went to revivals that they was holding and let me tell you something back at that time Jerry and Gerald was all the workers. They, they would work the older, and they, I mean, they would get young people, multitudes of young people, to come to the altar. Amen. I don't even remember where the church was, but I know it was on the east side of the county someplace, and we was over there, Roscoe Gray was a pastor here. Bill Henderson was an assistant pastor. And we was over there at a two-week revival, I, I believe. And we went almost every night to that revival. And the glory of God was there in a special, mighty way. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm thankful that Jerry's starting to come down and yeah. be with us and yeah. taking yeah. part in oh, the singing. Yeah. And that yeah. really did bless me tonight. Amen. Yeah. 
that see and hear what was going on tonight. Sonny blesses me all the time. He used to he used to argue with me all the time. I talked to him about the Lord and, and he didn't think that was for him. But I think he's found out different. Yeah. 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 Praise, yeah. Praise the Lord. I make up all the excuses I can make up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to get started into this. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 22. Uh, 16 says, Do not err, my brethren, my beloved brethren. We need to make sure that what we're doing, we're doing it pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. And if we do, Amen. God is going to bless us up. Yes. He's going to bless us. <laughs> Amen. He's going to bless us. And, and I mean, He's going to do some great things. Amen. I didn't mean bless us up. I, that just <laughs> come out the wrong way. But He is going to bless us. <laughs> Bless <him Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. And you know what it says? Deceiving your own self. Amen. And, uh, it's awful easy for us to uh, think that we're doers of the word and we. We listen with about half an ear, maybe not even half an ear, to what God is saying to us and what he wants us to do. Last night I, I was reading the Bible and I was had Jimmy Swaggart on and I was trying to listen to Jimmy Swaggart and I was trying to read and I wasn't getting anything I didn't know what he was saying or what the Bible was saying. And that's not the way that God wants us to be. He said, be ye doers of the word. Amen. Not just hearers only. Uh, it is so good to get into Bible reading and praying and feel the Spirit of God come down Amen. in a great and a mighty way. And know that uh, God is on the scene where it's just you and amen. Him. Yes, amen. That, that you don't have to be in church no. to hear the word of God. No. But, I mean, this is a good place to be at amen. and hear the uh, word of God. But the word is for each and every one of us individually. I mean, you can... Uh, know just as much about the Bible as I know. God can talk to you just the very same way that he talks to me. The, it goes on to say over here that God is no respecter of persons. God will talk to you if you'll just listen to him while he's wanting to talk to you. Amen. So it says be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There's really some interesting things that it brings, thoughts it brings out down here in this scripture. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a the glass. Then you know what it says happens to that man. It says, uh, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. And I mean, this is the word of God talking to us tonight. The, it don't take very long. One place it says, As you look in a glass darkly, and you look in there, and they're talking about in a mirror. You look in a mirror, and you look in there, uh, but it's dark, you know. And as soon as you turn around, walk away from that mirror, you forget what you look like. And the, uh, 
Uh, you may think that you look all together different than once you get away from that mirror than what you really look. And, and this, I mean, is comparing us to uh, not being what God wants us to be. That's why it says, do not err, my brethren. Do not err because uh, uh, if we err, then everything that we do is going to be in vain. I mean, it, it's going I mean, unless you really open up your spiritual ears, do you know that you've got two sets of ears tonight, Amen. Brother Bob? And you got spiritual ears and you got the natural ears. You got spiritual eyes and you got natural eyes. Uh, uh, you should have a spiritual mouth that you can speak spiritual things from. Uh, that's what I want. Uh, I want to know more about him, Sister Jackie. Mm -hmm. and I, I want to know more mm -hmm. about my Lord. And mm -hmm. the only way that I can do that is uh, if I'm a hearer of the word uh, first of all. And, but that's not enough just mm -hmm. to be a hearer of the word. We've got to be a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. And to be a doer of the word is to be a hearer, listen to God and see what it is that he wants us to do Amen. and then be obedient to him and do what he wants us to do. Amen. And when he speaks to us, be obedient to him. Amen. How many times do we allow other things to get between us and God when God says, I want you to be a doer of the word now? And uh, how many times do we say, Oh, I'm too tired, or this is wrong, or that's wrong. Uh, I don't want to read right now. I don't want to pray right now. Uh, I'd just rather to sit here and rest. Or this is really an interesting TV show I've got on. They're uh, uh, saying things about the uh, ancient aliens that, that I'd like to find out about. <laughs> Uh, or there's other things that's on that can distract you. And that is an error. That's what the Bible is talking about here. And uh, when I start reading these things and uh, God starts speaking to me, I'm telling you, uh, there's a light that comes on in my mind uh, that I know that God is not fooling. I know that. Uh, uh, to start with, I know that my God is real, uh, but I know that what his word says that uh, uh, we need to take it to heart. And yes. if we would take his word to heart, uh, let me tell you something, uh, uh, Brother Dale, the spirit of God could uh, get to moving in this church house. And it's good now, uh, but we're only getting a sample of what it could be. If, if we oh if we would turn loose and, and let God uh, do what he wants Amen. to do here and let me tell you something Amen. if we would be at having church and uh, maybe seven days a week uh, uh, I mean uh, it makes a difference when you get uh, uh, fired up with God uh, the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. is what makes a difference uh, in the way that uh, our Christian life uh, works within us. Uh, I mean, it can be something born and uh, uh, something that you don't want any more to do with and uh, what you got to do with it right now if you look at it on the natural side. Amen. But there's a spiritual side. I mean, we got to feed that spiritual man. Uh, Brother Dale, uh, we don't need to feed the uh, natural man because he's got enough food uh, right now <laughs> and the devil's going to feed him. Uh, but what we need Amen. to feed the... Oh, I feel the Spirit of God coming down. I feel the Spirit of God here uh, right now. Uh, we need to realize uh, uh, that uh, uh, the devil... Uh, uh, he's working on every side. Uh, yes, he he's is. there to hinder uh, yes. everything that he can. Uh, uh, when he was cast out of heaven, uh, uh, the word was spoken from God, said, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. 
And let me tell you something. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, the devil is uh, here, and this is his playground uh, right now. Uh, but one of these days, uh, and I hope it'll be soon, he's going to be bound uh, uh, for a thousand years. He's going to be bound. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, how I long to see that uh, time. I want uh, to uh, be in the millennial reign. Yeah. Oh, I want uh, yeah. uh, Jesus to be my uh, Lord and my yeah. master, yeah. the King of kings and the yeah. uh, Lord of lords yeah. here yeah. on this yeah. earth. Yeah. I, I want to walk with him and talk with him. Yeah. I want to be able to go and visit him. Uh, I want to be able to go and sit down at his throne and get acquainted with him and say, hey, Jesus, do you remember that night hey, you came and visited with me? Mm -hmm. I'd like to say, Jesus, do you remember uh, the night that uh, uh, you washed all my sins away up there at that altar? Mm -hmm. Oh, I tell you what, uh, there's yeah. nothing like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the relationship mm -hmm. that you've got mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, uh, God oh, if you allow to uh, work in your life but you've got to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word and uh, let me tell you something it takes a, a lot of work to uh, get to where God wants you uh, uh, to be and uh, uh, to uh, uh, be in his presence and uh, shut everything else out and not let the devil come in and interfere uh, but tell him that he's a, a liar and the father of all liars and that uh, he don't have any place in our heart in our life oh let me tell you something there is a place with Jesus that is uh, uh, worth the uh, Everything that uh, we give up, I mean, what do you give up uh, to start with except you give up uh, what you don't need to have in your life to start with? And if, uh, if we realize that and we get a hunger uh, for what the, uh, the Word of God is talking about here just in this one chapter, in James, if we get a hunger for that, I mean, oh, there's message after message after message, uh, Brother Bob, in the first chapter of James mm -hmm. here, and then I've never written, not even touched on tonight. I mean, there's a, a, there's lots of instructions telling us uh, uh, what it's going to take to get to heaven and what uh, it's going to take to miss heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, one of them is just to be a, a person that wavers, that, uh, and that don't walk a straight line. And Jesus said, the path is straight and it's narrow. The uh, path is straight and narrow that leads to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but uh, you know what? In this day and time, uh, they're saying uh, that you can live the way you want to live, uh, that Jesus don't care and that's in the charismatic uh, churches more than any place. Uh, we went to a charismatic church in St. Louis, and uh, this uh, a man that got up to preach that night, he said, uh, uh, don't worry about what you've done back in the middle of the week. If you've been in a nightclub, if you've been drunk, whatever you've been doing, uh, don't worry about that. We're here tonight to worship God. And that might be true. Uh, they could come in out of the nightclub and get right with God, uh, but you can't uh, uh, go on thinking that you can live that way and get by with it because uh, Jesus said, uh, the ones that overcome uh, the same shall, uh, shall be saved. Uh, it's not the ones that live a loose life and, and think that they can live any way that they want to live, uh, but it's the ones that dedicates their life to God and decides that uh, I'm going to be a child of God. That's the ones that's going to make heaven their home. 
It says, uh, uh, let's see, I think it got 25. 25. Go to 25. <laughs> but uh, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a, for, uh, not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, uh, of the work, this man shall be blessed indeed. Oh, there's enough in that verse right Amen. there, Brother Dave. There's enough to preach on. Uh, I mean, to just start preaching and preach and preach and preach <laughs> and never quit. It, it says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Amen. Do you know that that was the most blessed thing that ever happened to this old world? Amen. That Amen. Jesus came here with liberty <laughs> to set us free Amen. from the law, the curse of sin and death. Amen. If it Amen. wasn't for this Amen. liberty, Amen that Christ bought, brought here, there, there couldn't be any of us that's here be saved. Amen. Because uh, we would be lawbreakers and we would not be counted worthy because there is no other sacrifice except uh, for the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. Uh, that can uh, be fitting uh, to cover our sins and to uh, lift us up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll go on then unto me. And, uh, and let me tell you, that is exactly uh, what happens uh, uh, when you really get set free uh, from the uh, 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 law of the curse of sin and death. Uh, you're set free if you only continue in this liberty that is Amen. talking about here. Amen. 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 I tell you what, it's something to be appreciated tonight. Oh my what Christ God. has done for Amen. us. It's something to be appreciated Amen. Uh, because uh, uh, this is no light thing. How long do you think uh, the discussion went on in heaven before there was uh, this uh, covenant that we're living under now? before it was grown up and it was brought to earth uh, between God the Father and God the Son that uh, uh, Jesus said I will, I'll go I'll do what you want me to do Father, I will be the ultimate sacrifice that Amen. is going to be shed that my blood can be shed that all the sins of the world and for God so loved the world and that he gave his only begotten Amen. son, Amen. that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not Amen. perish, but Amen. have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Oh, I tell you tonight, Amen. how can we turn him away? How can we uh, 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 just forget about what Jesus has done for us Amen. and so lightly uh, walk away? And I mean, that's what... Uh, and multitudes upon multitudes have done. And they've walked away from what uh, uh, God has done for them. They've walked away and they've said, God don't uh, care. It's just like we was talking about uh, Lot and his wife uh, uh, leaving uh, the cities there, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and uh, uh, Lot's wife looked back because her love was back there. And that's understandable, it's seeable, it, uh, that's uh, uh, the ones that she was leaving, was the ones that she loved. Uh, but uh, uh, God was taking them out and setting them free. Amen. Let me tell you something, if I look back into uh, my family, I'd turn around and I'd go back uh, where they're at because I love them. Uh, but I can't do that because I love the Lord so much. Uh, uh, all of my grandkids, uh, uh, most of them, I don't even know where they're at or what they're doing. Uh, uh, what a great waste that is that they don't know of the 
thing that I'm preaching about tonight. They don't know uh, what it's all about. Uh, uh, there could be a house full here tonight if the uh, uh, grandkids, the uh, uh, great-grandchildren, and um, I guess even great-great-grandchildren, uh, babies are coming along uh, now. Uh, but uh, all, uh, what a waste it is that uh, uh, people is letting this precious time go by. Amen. And they're, they're, they think, I've got plenty of time. Or they think, uh, it, is it really real? Uh, is, is there really a God? Oh, how can anybody be ignorant enough to look at the universe, to look at our world? and everything that you can see out there and not know that uh, there is a God that uh, created everything that you can see. It couldn't just happen by a chance. It didn't just happen. It happened because uh, God spoke it into existence. And we're so willing sometimes to sit back and think, Oh, this is so much fun. I remember the day when I done that. I remember when we lived in St. Louis, uh, some rough neighborhoods, and we had neighbors that was drunk, and uh, they'd all gather in our backyard, and we'd sit out there <coughs> hour after hour, enjoying what was going on because there wasn't anything bad except they was drinking beer and whatever else that come along for them to drink. Uh, but it seemed like such entertainment back at that time. And we'd go to the Teamsters Lake and uh, Peebly and we'd uh, catch fish and we'd have a big fish fry and the uh, we uh, we would just plan every weekend that way. We had drifted away from God. Me and Margaret had. We drifted away from God. And we were satisfied to accept something of so much less value than what God had in store for us. Yeah. It, it wasn't until many years later that God got a hold of me so strong that I had, I, I didn't have to turn back to him, but I had, if I hadn't turned back to him, I believe that I would have been dead by now. I know one thing, when I took this church, I told Brother Red, I said, I won't live past 70, I was about two years under 70 then, and he said, I hope I die before you do. I don't want to go through getting another pastor down there. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I honestly thought that I was going to die. But God started adding years to my life. Amen. And he started adding spirit Hallelujah. to my preaching. Amen. And he Hallelujah. started adding Amen. life to my years. Uh, he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Along the way, about halfway, I've suffered one of the worst losses that I've ever suffered in my life. And I thought, this will do me up. I won't be able to make it. But I found out with God a hold of my hand that I come through it. And I come through it with the power of God a hold of me that I found out that it was uh, uh, me and God. It wasn't, I didn't need anyone else. It was Amen. God that uh, uh, was the one uh, that was in charge of my life. And I thought that I couldn't make it on my own. But I found out, uh, Brother Dale, that uh, with God, all things are possible. Amen. And, and uh, oh, let me tell you Amen. something. There's nothing as... Uh, enjoyable, as fulfilling as it is standing up here behind uh, this pulpit uh, where it used to be Harry and uh, Joel Walker's uh, uh, General Baptist Church and they tried to get me to start preaching back then uh, but God 
had another plan for me, I guess, uh, because uh, one day and I did accept his calling, and one day he did lead me back down yeah. here uh, to pastor this church, uh, and I'm not saying that except the boss for God. Amen. It's the mighty, wondrous, working power of God. Back through all the years that I've lived, from back there in 1956 when they opened church up in the old school house, and God's Spirit would be there so strong that, I mean, I had a burning desire to get in that church and let God have his way in my life. But I had another burning desire to get out there in the world and let the devil have his way in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know what young people go through. I went through it myself. Uh, and I was uh, uh, 16 years old in 1956, believe it or not. <laughs> there was a day, there was a day when I was born, as in 1938, but that's been a long time ago. I was born over there where uh, Craig Green lives at right now. I was born there. My dad had to go to Old Greenville to get the doctor to come out. That was a long walk from over there, probably at least six or seven miles, something like that. It was uh, one August, the second day of August, probably hot, probably hot and dry. And that was born same place in December. It was probably cold yeah. in December. But that's the way things was back in 1936 and 1938. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any modern conveniences. Dad didn't have a car. He never owned one in his lifetime. He had a wagon and team, but he walked over green because the doctor had a car and he knew he could drive back to wow. him. <laughs> but things are, are different. They're different in the span of time that I've lived, but they're different in the way that I live. My God is real, Amen. for I feel him in my heart. Amen. And that, oh, how I love him. You know what? I'm not even waiting near, even got started in this again tonight, <laughs> but I'm gonna close where I'm at right now. Do you know what? This whole book is full of messages. Amen. And Amen. there's no way to ever get through preaching. Amen. There's no retirement place in preaching. I might I might not be preaching here, but if I live 